everybody, welcome in today's video. In today's video I'm going to talk about and demonstrate um, one of the cheapest markers I've ever came across. Um, and well, let's see if they are good, very cheap alternative to Copic markers and Pro markers and such. So yeah, hope you enjoy. So today's video is all about these twin markers from the action um, yeah so I came across these totally by accident while I was visiting the local action when I'm there I'm always going into well the, the craft corner just for fun or to see if there's anything interesting um, and then these markers were laying about and I decided to buy two sets I got the blue and the and the pink one um, and then I went home and tested them out on a piece of paper and was like well this isn't bad for 12 markers for about 3.99 euro so close to 4 euro 12 markers 4 euro I mean come on really um, so that's about f uh, 33 cents per marker. Like if you compare that to a pro marker, a pro marker here is 350, around 350, 4 euros. And a Copic marker is very close to, well, one store sells them for 550 and another sells them for 7 euros. So, I mean this is a, 12, a set of 12 and it costs about 4 euro you can't even get one Copic marker for that price I mean you get 12 for not even one Copic marker that's crazy right? so they have like 4 sets a yellow red set and a green grey ish set and then there's the purple blue set and the pink another pink red set sort of well, more like carmine reds cooler reds and these have warmer reds and yeah so in total 48 colors the the only problem with these is, is that they're not available open stock and um you can't get them anywhere else it seems just in the action store and not anywhere online and in the stores themselves they flew out like hot cookies it's crazy so I'm very lucky that I came across them when I did because a week later they were already gone yeah so let's open one up oh, by the way on the on the box it shows you what colors are inside <coughs> so this is what the marker looks like it looks very decent though I heard from other people who have this is that the well you can already see it a bit here is that the, the writings will smudge off eventually and while drawing with these I had some of these the the color fell from the cap and another thing I noticed is that especially in this set um, is that the color description and often also the color on top of the cap doesn't really match with uh, with what with the true ink color like I can show you. I have a piece of paper as always. Yeah, there were some funny, funny colors in here. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, yeah. There were also some misprints. Like on here, it says fresh green, and on the other side, it says fresh green. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> a marker of 33 cents. What do you want? So yeah, this color it shows on the cap. It's kind of 
ochre-ish, warm yellow-ish, but it says fresh green. Right. So... I don't know, but does this look like green to you? It doesn't really look like green to me, <laughs> to be honest. Oops. So, yeah, that's that's a bit funny. Um, so yeah, these twin markers, they have a bullet nip on one side. Actually, where the grey little strip is, that's the bullet nip. And on the other side, we have a chisel nip. But, yeah. As far as the ink concerned, not being really consistent with what's on the cap, it does come out pretty nicely and it just looks like any other alcohol marker ink to me. So, yeah. But there were more colors in other sets that had a bit of a strange description to them while well, the ink color is totally different so that's to some people that's a huge uh, con and other people like me don't really care about it but yeah let's say you could buy these in open, open stock and the the color that they show you doesn't match what what, what comes out then you just bought a color you wanted but you got something else in the end, so yeah, it is a bit of a minus, but then again, it's a 30 cents, uh, 30 euro cents marker, so can't really complain there. So yeah, so yeah, let's go try and draw something with it. Today I won't be drawing a fan art for a change, but an adorable happy cat because cats are perfection <laughs> and I just love drawing them and of course to be around them even though mine has the habit of interrupting me while I'm doing art just as he did while I was doing the line art for this one as usual I start out by sketching down my idea on the paper I am using a mechanical pencil with a 0.5 lead on a small piece of Legion Stonehenge paper about the size of a double SAO. I really enjoy sketching with a mechanical pencil because you don't need to sharpen them and they keep a fine sharp point at all times. To keep the face in balance, like the position of the eyes, nose and mouth, I use guidelines like the so-called face cross while I'm sketching to prevent things like one eye being lower than the other or a nose that is too far down or too far to the left or right from happening. And there we have it, my cat trying to convince me it's much more fun to pet him than to draw. <laughs> the little bugger. For the line art I am using a Bimoji brush pen from Kuritake which was my first time using this pen. It has a nice firm felted tip that isn't as flexible as more traditional brush pens, but still you can get very nice line variations depending on the pressure or angle you apply them in. I really liked working with it at least. Also its ink is permanent, so you can go over it with alcohol markers and watercolors without having to worry that the ink will start to bleed or feather out on your paper. Now that the line art is nearly done, it's time for the markers to shine. How well will the super cheap markers perform? Things I find important and will be looking out for with alcohol markers are their blendability and the vibrancy of the colors. Are they comfortable to work with, etc. For this piece I chose to work with the colors of the blue and pink set. Also, I will use a colorless blender because apparently there is no colorless blender in the twin marker line. So I started with the background using mainly soft pastel colors as it is a bit out of my comfort zone as I am used to strong contrast using deep colors. So it was a bit of a challenge but it was fun nonetheless. 
To my great surprise, the markers blended really well together and even worked well with the colorless blender. The colors are nice and vibrant, just as you would expect from an alcohol marker. Coloring the cat, I decided to go yet again out of my comfort zone and give it an unnatural colors. The same ones that I used on the background, but in reverse. The markers lay nice in the hand, even though I do prefer round barrels more. But because they are square shaped, they won't roll off your work surface. Also, I prefer brush tips to color with because they cover faster and you can get these nice sweeping effects with them. And it is easier to get smoother and softer color transitions with a brush nib. So it did took a bit for me to get used to color with a harder bullet nib. So they might not be the most comfortable markers I've used, but what they need to do, they do almost as well as the more expensive brands of alcohol markers. The ink comes out nicely, the markers never felt dry while coloring, and they blend amazingly well for such a cheap marker. As you might can tell, I was able to get a pretty smooth transition between the different colors in the background and on the funny looking cat. Also, they layer quite well on top of each other, so you can get some nice color mixes and blends. So I think they are excellent markers for those 4 euros and are great for anyone who wants to try their hand at alcohol marker art and to practice with without having to spend a small fortune to get you started. And of course, if you are on a tight budget, these markers will be a great alternative. At least they really impressed me. I wanted to see how well colored pencils would look on top of them, so I grabbed my Tombow Hero G10 colored pencils to add some extra shading and details in the cat's face and fur to give it a bit more life and depth. I just loved the combo of alcohol markers and colored pencils. And of course it worked like a charm. I could easily refine some details with the pencils and soften up some edges like on the darker facial markings. So the markers passed this test as well. For the final touches, I took the white pen ink from Dr. P.H. Martin to draw out the whiskers and the highlights. I have been trying various white inks and gel pens, but this one I like the best so far. It's nice and opaque, easy to apply with a brush, and the ink in the bottle doesn't dry out within a month or two, like the Winsor Newton Calligraphy ink did. Which was a shame, because I really liked it. To finish this piece off, I'm going to add some texture and shiny goodness with embossing powder. I use a swirly floral clear stamp design and cover it with clear ink. You won't see this ink, but it is sticky so it will grab the embossing powder you will pour over. The excess powder I pour back into the jar so it can be used on another project. With a heat gun I melt the powder until it becomes shiny and plastic-like. The white powder becomes transparent, but shifts from green to orange from certain angles. Then I found some floral embellishments with an opal-ish color that I just had to use on this piece to finish it off. We're nearing the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. Also, if you don't want to miss any of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave suggestions or questions in the comment section or just to say hi. I love reading through them and to reply. So thank you for watching and hopefully I see you back in the next video. Have a good one!